Welcome. We're now at our final conservation law of the semester, angular momentum. We want to know how to solve these problems. So we're going to go through the sketch, organize, solve method for approaching these problems. So with our sketch thing, it's similar to linear momentum in that we're going to have collisions, explosions, things like that. It's very much a before versus after. So our first sketch is we want to always draw before and after states to understand what's going on that we are talking about. Once we've done that, we want to draw our interaction diagram and specifically we want to draw it for the during state. So if we have an explosion it's during the explosion, if we have a collision it's during the collision, things of that sort. And what we can do is we can write, try to define a system where no external torque on the system. So if we don't have any external torque, right, if we can do this, what this means is that, right, our torque external is zero. Therefore, our angular momentum is conserved. What do we get if we have our angular momentum conserved? So if our angular momentum is conserved, we are saying that the angular momentum before is equal to the angular momentum after. So we can write in an equation of L1i. And with angular momentum, we don't have to worry about vectors, at least not at this level. So L1i plus L2i plus L3i, so on and so forth, is equal to L1f plus L2f plus L3f, and so on and so forth. Now, if we can't say this, right, we might have a problem in which we have an external torque being applied. So if our L is not conserved, what we are saying is we are saying the change in L of our system is equal to the integral of the torque over time. Very similar to impulse. So if we're exerting an external torque, we can change the angular momentum of the system. So just like we've done for all of our conservation laws, just so what we've done all, for all of our forces, once we have kind of what we understand, we want to write a table of knowns and unknowns. And we want to determine collision parameters. So in certain cases, we could be given a collision parameter such that the two angular momentums are equal but in opposite directions or such. But sometimes we might be given just a statement such as inelastic. If it's inelastic, what that means is that the final angular velocity of 1 is equal to the final angular velocity of 2, so on and so forth, that we just have one final angular velocity. If we have an explosion, we're saying that the initial angular velocity of 1 is equal to the initial angular velocity of 2, and that they all have the same initial and angular velocity. So these are the three ones that are probably going to be given. But just in case, and for right, completion's sake, we could be sold something about that it's an elastic collision. And then in that case, the total kinetic energy initial is going to be equal to the kinetic energy final. So make sure that you're not right, applying elastic explosion or elastic if it's instead given and you're not told one of these. But very often, it's going to be inelastic or explosion, and occasionally can be given. So how do we solve this? 
we want to use our collision parameter equation with our conservation of angular momentum equation. So once we have that, we want to then write solve our L conservation equation. Simplify, right, and uh, figure things out. And lastly, we want to write check to make sense. This is one of our last times where we've got stuff that really, really makes sense and really can be understood um, by <laughs> just taking a look at it. So make sure to use this for one last few times uh, as you can when you're doing that. So. We have our sketch, organize, and solve, very similar to uh, linear momentum. But since it's angular momentum, since we are only going so far this semester, it's only in one dimension. And we only have right, elastic explosion or given. Uh, don't worry too much about elastic uh, collisions in angular momentum. It's just one step farther than we want to go.